Welcome to MAP, the bi-weekly market access podcast provided by Mars Market Access and Pricing Strategy, which is your healthcare consultancy in the German-speaking markets. Mars makes it as easy as possible for you to get your pharmaceutical, medtech or digital health product to the market and of course get the price it deserves. My name is Stefan Walzer, I'm the founder of Mars and a health economist by training and working in the fields of market access, reimbursement, pricing and health economics already since 2004. Additionally, I founded the consultancy P&N Pricing and Negotiations in Healthcare based in Toronto, Canada, which supports companies and individuals globally by coaching, simulations and training, especially on negotiations. This service is including our innovative virtual reality simulation program and is part of the Negotiation Lab. And now let's learn about the market access and reimbursement systems around the globe. Good morning. Today with Aurélie Moser from France. I think uh, we have spent already quite a long time when we both were in the industry. But before I would maybe introduce yourself, I think uh, Aurélie, it's probably best if you could introduce yourself. Because I think also in the last years, you have changed a bit your, let's say, focus in the business world, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Stefan. Very happy to be here. Uh, calling from Switzerland, where I'm based, uh, being friends, uh, as you mentioned. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so um, I'm helping early stage team from corporate and startup to develop better product in healthcare that their customer wants and that they will pay for it, right? And I I have a 20 years experience, 15 years in corporate, where we used to be colleagues, right? Uh, exactly. In the pharma world, a lot in a rush, where I had uh, access and pricing leadership role in affiliate, in global, and then set up an innovation team uh, to support uh, those even always challenging uh, access questions, which lead me to my second uh, career path, uh, setting up my company, BAM Booster, where I help uh, now uh, teams uh, with a very broad uh, scope of clients, the big one, so top 10 pharma company and also early stage startup in digital health and um, AI uh, product. Great. Thank you for that intro. I mean, it gives you already quite big span, right? From, let's say, the traditional maybe kind of drug environment uh, into the probably even the future, right? With digital health and artificial intelligence and the, probably everything, uh, let's say, linked to that. I mean... You mentioned also in your introduction that you have had experience on a global and on a local level. At the same time, you also said that you're now working with big pharma or with bigger companies, but also with a lot of startups. When you start your kind of, let's say, discussions with your clients, with the, with the companies who are approaching you, where do you think are the biggest kind of differences when thinking about, let's say, a global versus a local perspective? Mm -hmm. And what is maybe the one where you would say maybe focus first, or is that maybe a wrong approach? No, I, I see. So uh, let me give you an example of engagement. I will be engaged by a region to help uh, affiliate to fine tune or define their go to market strategy for a new digital health device. Okay. And the challenge we see is that digital health is more complicated, in fact, than drugs, you know, that sounds maybe counterintuitive for us. I launched really big, big drugs, right, in the past 15 years, but it's simple. And it's simple because you have one drug, probably one disease or segment, one physician who prescribe, one hospital or type of setup, it will be used and administered and followed, uh, no matter what is the country. So the, the variability will be marginal. The access and pricing could be different. I, I get that. When it comes to digital health, then everything is more complex, right? It's more complex, I would say, at least for three layers. You have many more players to interact with when you are an affiliate, right? You have to deal, if it's, let's say, a SaaS or an algorithm supporting decision-making or screening for breast cancer, you not only deal with the oncologist, as you used to be, but you have to deal with the IT department who has to have a say on your algorithm. You, you have to deal with the 
CFO and CEO of the hospital because usually those products when they are launched are not reimbursed. So it's on their own budget. So you have many more uh, complex people to interact with, not to mention uh, the people who might lose money or power when you launch your product. Okay, All the saboteur space or the people who have negative incentive for you to launch, it's a big pool of stakeholders that you have to identify. So reason one, why it's more complicated, I think, but when I see now multiple new players, multiple new budget holder, you know, it could be really out of pocket, you know, company launch product out of pocket, pay by patient. Okay. It could be a lot more with partnership. So how you do and share the, the budget and the, in, uh, the investment with a partner. We see many more uh, uh, complicated and interesting partnership in digital health. And the third reason I see, you know, multiple player, multiple budget holder is the data. You know, things we we keep hearing in, in, in pharma for a long time, but digital health is about data. And it's theoretically easy access to data, right? So data, it's an amazing way for us in access to support the claim of reimbursement, to surprise our pricing strategy, but it's also a way to monetize a service, right? Later, later on. Okay. So that's what I see. I, I see from a launch of a drug from a global perspective an affiliate is not so different but when you start to launch most product in the digital space then the view of the global and affiliate are quite different and you need to spend time and support affiliate to customize the global strategy to the market to speed up the penetration in the local market to ensure high uh, value capture yeah no, no yeah <laughs> i think thank you i think with your kind of um, explanation it you could feel let's say the complexity i think difficult is always a kind of um, uh, a difficult word really right but uh, i think the complexity i think is 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 quite clear i think the with the external and also with the external kind of uh, external and internal obviously kind of environments when when selling such a product you also just said, I think, at the end that it sounds at least that the local stakeholders and the perceptions and the systems processes are probably more important. Mm -hmm. When you speak with companies, do they already know which, let's say, local, meaning which country might be of interest? Or is that an even further kind of complexity? Maybe, especially if they would say, look, I mean, we might be interested in Europe. Because the yeah. US, obviously, a big, big market. So and this, if, if that's a focus, I think it's quite clear. But what about those kind of differences within Europe? So I would say you have two type of uh, big corporate company. The one who are already structured to succeed or aim to succeed, meaning they have a new way to develop those products or innovation framework. And they have identified key affiliate, let's say two or three, that will be the place to test the solution. Okay, so helping global from day one to have a local view, right? Um, and the beauty of digital health, it could be quick. You know, you don't have to open clinical trials in, in big hospital. You know, you could have a very much a quicker way uh, into the market. So I would say I see these partnership between a global organization and two are key markets. You know, you could think of Germany with DIGA, but also France or also UK or some smaller player. Uh, also, for example, Belgium is an amazing place to, to experiment for a global entity or European entity. So I see this setup that works and I still see the alternative, which is we still believe as a global organization that what we have designed globally will fit any market. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the risk is delay in access, delay in, in yeah, uh, go to market yeah. strategy. Exactly. And I think ac access could be maybe even broader. I think you brought up very yeah. early in the discussion the, uh, let's say, the, the difference or the other viewpoint when you launch a drug. 
I mean, you know, yes, you have already mentioned a couple of different stakeholders, like the IT department, right? If you think maybe about uh, a digital health solution for for a hospital or even mm -hmm. a small kind of practice, right? Mm -hmm. But I mean, even if you would say you have maybe satisfied, uh, let's say, the national stakeholders, mm -hmm. maybe then the kind of maybe call it more regional if you want to take a hospital administration in there, but ultimately you might also need the user, right? So, and a lot of times that's also then the patient, which is not making the life of those companies even yes. easier, right? Yeah. So, and and something that I, I think is extremely exciting in, in digital health in general, and it's something we in Access we are good at. Uh, and let me explain. I think when you work in Access, in pricing, in reimbursement, the way we look at product and services is by default from an ecosystem view, you know, mm. because we know, okay, physician need to be convinced, but the national budget holder need to be convinced. The regional budget holder need to be convinced. The hospital CFO, if it's taking that out of his budget hospital, need to be convinced, right? Mm. Mm. So I would say the the way we approach project have always been from this multi-stakeholder uh, standpoint. And that's why one of the first things teams do with me when it comes to, okay, I need to adapt my global launching a new algorithm uh, for breast cancer diagnostic to my local market in Spain. Okay. We go through ecosystem mapping, but really in detail from, okay, who is the user? Easy. <laughs> then next is who influence, meaning who is between my product and the user. Okay, you could think of EMA, FDA, but it could be a, co um, a committee in the hospital who review any algorithm, you know, uh, NGT, PR, compliance, and liability issue, a legal department. Okay, so the second is who influence. Mm -hmm. Then you have all the bucket of who pay from really who is the budget holder, but also who has financial incentive to use it or not. You know, you could think of, I don't know, in... in um, in the radiology department, most of the revenue come from X-ray analysis. I'm just making that up. If you bring an algorithm that reduces by time 10, the time spent on that, what's the activity and the final revenue and so on, and the power related to that? So maybe you have people who have positive and negative incentives that you need to map. So that's the number three. The number four is people who will support maintain your product. So from the maintenance part, the recycling part. So who is mm -hmm. later, once you have set up, but who needs to keep your product or algorithm uh, alive? And uh, last but not least are the saboteur I already mentioned, you know, the people you will not be pleased by you succeeding and you have many in digital health because you change the way people operate, you change the standard of care at scale and the beneficiary, you know, mm -hmm. from if the user is a kid, the patient benefits. If an employee is a user, the employer benefits. Mm -hmm. And so you need to have this ecosystem mapping that we in access are used mm -hmm. done effectively early on. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think that's probably the kind of um, big, big and important kind of, I think it's probably more than one step, right? <laughs> Ultimately, it's a, it's, it's a multi-step approach. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I, I could well imagine, I mean, you probably as well remember when we first started many years ago, especially also on a global, maybe even in some local, let's say affiliates to bring different perspectives uh, into consideration that it it was quite difficult, <clears throat> especially when it came to the implementation. Right? It's also the kind of always the kind of question because budget is also always limited. Where to focus first? Right. So taking all stakeholders into consideration is a I think it's a great goal, and I think ultimately it's the way to go. Right. But how are, are there are there maybe any differences? Let's say when we consider different different phases in the life cycle. Right. So mm -hmm. if there maybe I think you always uh, let's say product not digital yeah. hard. I mean, if there are companies in the very early stages, still in the yeah. programming phase, yeah. is there maybe 
bigger and a broader view and the more you're coming maybe towards the launch phase then it's getting a, even further detailed and clearly focused i mean how do you approach that kind of complexity yeah so we uh, at bambuso we have an online academy to help early stage you know team to go quickly to a position where global could say okay i invest in this product in this market or we scale in multiple countries and i would totally echo what you say early days is being customer centric but from a, a ecosystem uh, standpoint okay to see who plays have a clear use case you know is my product intended for oncologists to diagnose or is it used for i don't know patient to track uh, glycemic um uh, yes and then as you evolve i think the for me the second step as you have clear on you know you call that the problem space or the, the situation space, you review the design of your product. Okay. So typically global and for global folks, hello, we both were in global roles. Of no? course. We, we know, <laughs> but you will get something that is intentionally vague. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because it has to address multiple markets. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you have one statement or the value of your product you have one way to price it. You have one way probably the channel identify, okay, which is good. Mm -hmm. And so in the second steps, once you have done your problem and situation analysis, you redesign the product locally. And for the redesign, my recommendation and what I've been doing for the past um, yeah, 10 years now is using a business model approach. And that's the only way to succeed in those complex product launches. Uh, the business model means that you realize you're not launching a product, but you're launching a mechanism, so a business model, which is a way to produce your product, to deliver to the right segment, and to capture value. Okay, so that's three, those three goals at once. So to be very pragmatic, I will take, and I've redesigned a um, what we call 3C business model canvas. So 3C is three customer that mm -hmm. we know in healthcare uh, in access at least the user, the one who decide and the one who pay. And I adapted the business model canvas from Alex Osterwalder and Yves Pinier to the complexity mm -hmm. of healthcare. And so step two in your, back to your comment is, okay, now we take what we come from global and we see how detailed we could get into a business model canvas. And we see very quickly that it's not clear. In fact, we don't really know who pay, you know? Uh, we, we, are, we are not clear on the, the, the money flow, or we are not clear. We have a value proposition that is vague, but in fact, we need, we need to convince a lab. Uh, so if it's a diagnostic tool, we need to uh, convince the lab director. Mm -hmm. We need to convince the CFO and we need to convince the oncologist that this way to get data is better. So you need to customize your value proposition to the prioritized stakeholder in your system. So I would map this canvas on the idea or the strategy from global. We identify the blind spot and then we need to go into the local markets, right? And it's where yeah. uh, agility, uh, you know, lean startup and all those methods who help to learn quickly from a market and adapt comes in. So I would, we would say, okay, blind spot is, we don't know those three customers really, how the value proposition we have resonates. Okay. For each of them, we run five interviews. Mm -hmm. We collect the verbatim and the feedback. And we use that to update our value proposition that our self force will use, but not as a generic terms, but customized to each player in your system. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, it's basically, I mean, as you, as you called it, the, the intentionally vague global products yeah, would which, basically come to life, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so it just, you know, and, and I see that it's a very, it's a technique plugin that bring quickly benefit to the country mm -hmm. because it's structure and it's discipline, you know, and 
And the beauty also what I see is that once you have done that, so get from global something, go through these methods, you do it over and over for every next strategy in digital health or complex solution beyond the drug. Exactly. So team can, team, team can learn. Uh, and I would say people from access and pricing have really unfair advantage in a way <laughs> because they are used to these, you know, okay, we need to please many more people than just the physician, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, I fully agree. I was also taking just some, some notes here. I, I think interesting. I was also putting there. It, it, it sounds more like a kind of living process, right? Not so much a living document, but more living kind of process. And of course, I mean, we have both, or we're still working, obviously, in let's see, especially also in the, let's see, in, in, in payer environment. And I mean, there is not only one decision maker. There's not only yeah. one process. A lot of times, and still, even if you would. Let's say convince, for example, the payer and especially in digital health, if for example the users are not convinced, or maybe the prescribers, then you know, even the kind of payment flow, meaning that there's maybe reimbursement, even uh, because the payers might see the benefit of it, might not be sufficient, right? So you're right. Hmm. I think ultimately you would need to think obviously about the broad spectrum. I, I think you mentioned as well before, I think you used the terminology ecosystem. Yeah. And that's a very, very important consideration. But I mean, just coming back very quickly. On let's say the really the the how you would let's say use that then with the client is it really that let's say some of the clients might just take that do it with you for some of the first time and then obviously doing the kind of homework right getting either some further insights doing some interviews or maybe just speaking with some of the physician or, or, or whatever and then basically filling the gaps and then come back and just see if everything is now basically up and ready and then they basically launch it? Or how could I see that in real life? Yeah, so you have different use cases. Uh, one use case is exactly, okay, Global has want to launch uh, sample tracking for labs. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's the offering. And combine different existing solutions in one place. So also partnership with different startups, for example, who have a, an app to prevent mislabel of patient blood sample or preventing during the, the transport between the place where the blood is taken from the patient to the lab, there, there are issues, okay? So let's say that the idea, they have preferred solution, but the, the, the statement is, is vague, intentionally. So we go into, okay, now we are in Germany. We understand the, you know, the, the system. We, we do, we break down this vague statement mm -hmm. into... Uh, discipline 10, 10 boxes of this business model, and we see the blind spot. For every blind spot, we go out of the building and talk to people, experiment, or do simple prototype. And we are really in a situation where we try to forget we have the product and be more into listening and observing mode, which is not easy, but it's just to have, you know, a way to test the, the market. And so we collect many data that we input into uh, commercial documentation and field force training. So that's one use case. Another use case is if global say, okay, or countries say, well, I'm not sure we capture the full value of the product because in my setup, I think there is a medical value that is under mentioned and uh, under uh, stated. And uh, then, we will take the country who believe the same things and complementary to any pricing research that global will do. You know, I'm not changing that. I think there is reason why we do quantitative research, but there is value to do local qualitative assessment big time. Mm -hmm. So that was one recent example. We'll go into a discussion with five countries who share the view of I think is we, we should capture more value. We don't capture the value of our new product down the line. You know, if, I don't know, if it's quicker diagnostic, what does that mean? Okay, it's quicker diagnostic, but maybe you have many ripple effects down the line, you know, that who are not today, not capture and value. So you go out, you talk to payer, you talk to physician, you talk to many people and you come back as a team to say, okay, we were right. I think we should have a different pricing strategy based on qualitative data, but owned by the clients, you know? Yes. Or we are we stay the way we are because there is no signal to change. 
So that's mm -hmm. the other way you can go through this approach. That makes a lot of sense. No, absolutely. So we are getting a bit more towards the end. So I think, I mean, you have had obviously a lot of experience, not only let's say in the in, in a global environment, a local environment, but now also let's say with all of your different clients. And I know obviously every client is different, every project is different. So mm -hmm. if if the listeners would go back to you and just ask you for maybe the one or maybe two recommendations, and maybe we'll take the example of an of a of a company or maybe of a product in an early stage of a product cycle. Yeah. What would that be? I think if it's not a drug, and mm -hmm. that's the use case we are, mm -hmm. you have to look from a business model perspective. Okay. And meaning that you don't launch a product, you launch a way to, and I repeat, but it's very important to develop your product, deliver and capture value. Okay. So you basically you zoom out from the beginning which will help you to, from the beginning, see the, the stakeholder mapping. So that's the first thing. So it's a shift of, it's a mindset shift shift. And I think it's a place where medium size, big size pharma players struggle, right? Yeah. Which is very different from, you know, we see many tech, tech giants like Microsoft, Google, or even startup coming in this field with more ease, I would say. And the reason for this is, is that they never have only launched a product. Okay. They are really good at seeing the, the business model around. Okay. So that's the first thing. So I would say, what is your, your focus? Because your, your focus is, is your reality. Are your product, launching a product or launching a business model? That's the first things I would say. And the second thing is in this space, consider not only quantitative data, with payer research, but leverage your countries. So here, if we are talking to global or regional, because they could give you early signal of really what's happening in these complex systems. So you could make better informed decision. Thank you, Oli. I think that's, that's very clear. And hopefully, uh, let's say people and companies take that even further into consideration. I think it's very important. I think you, you just said it, it might be a, a mind shift, right? But a lot of times, I think, I, I mean, I, I like the way to just to say rethink, right? Think again or rethink it again, which is exactly the same kind of thing. I mean, just because I have done it always in that kind of way, maybe it's a good way to do it in another way. Or if they have had obviously experience, maybe also in other areas and fields, just try, just apply it. So I think. Yeah. Um, and and what I, I know, because I have coached 500 teams since I left uh, my, my employee role, it works. It works and people get used to this discipline where to reassess, rethink uh, the strategy. And if you, um, your listener wants, uh, we will put the link to the, the canvas I redesigned. So uh, that, you know, it helps to have a different view of your strategy. Absolutely. And we'll put that into the show notes. Absolutely. Perfect. Thank you, Early. It was a pleasure to speak to you. Looking forward to also with maybe you uh, and some other kind of further discussions. Yeah, thank you, Stefan. Bye-bye. So today we had a slightly different kind of topic than normal. I think normally we have a lot of discussion around payers and the process around payers and market access, etc. I think today was rather a kind of mix between, let's say, a product launch planning and obviously taking as well into considerations the payers in that kind of process. So Aurélie Moser, who has had her experience rather still in the payer environment, as you have as well heard, we spent also quite some time together in one of the bigger kind of companies. I think she's now focusing especially on, let's say, digital health, and it's also especially on different kind of companies who are then trying to maybe call it implement the global strategy into a local let's say success i would rather say i think a lot of times and i think she's right and we have all and both been working in that kind of environment meaning in a global context that i think intentionally as she said it those global documents might be rather vague which is not a kind of critique per se i think it's quite clear i think if you need to deal and maybe as well offer a solution for more than one or two countries, you need to be a bit more open, a bit more broad, right? Because otherwise you cannot just adapt it. But exactly that is then the kind of potential 
source of, um, let's say, having a difficulty when you launch the product. And that is where she was applying and adapting Canvas into, I think she called the 3C Canvas, that having basically the users, the decision makers and the payers into the kind of real focus and really identifying, as she then also called it, the blind spots. Meaning it's more the kind of question, how can you really apply successfully apply a global strategy into a local implementation. And that, I think, is also a kind of way how we could, for example, approach a payer strategy, which might be coming more from a global perspective. The same with the pricing and a negotiation strategy, where maybe the kind of direction is, is rather clear, but we might maybe need to identify the kind of key blind spots. I think just as an example, I think if we take, for example, the German environment where you would need then to uh, prepare for your negotiations, e.g. Uh, in an AMNOC process, then it's clear that maybe, yes, the launch price and the kind of target price, that's a quite easy, let's say, target in a way. But ultimately, it's then the steps between where you would need to as well to understand what are the kind of barriers, what are the kind of key things to convince. And is it maybe only, for example, the head association of the payers instead of maybe also the purchases in a hospital or maybe even other kind of regional payers to convince with. I think that's, I think, what she was intending to do. And as she said also at the very end, we'll also link her kind of directions into the show notes. That was an episode of MAP, the market access podcast provided by Mars Market Access and Pricing Strategy, which is your healthcare consultancy in the German-speaking markets. MAP is available every second week with a new episode, so watch out. And in case you might have questions, contact me directly and or visit our website on www.marketaccess-pricingstrategy.de.